Tink, tink. And tink, tink. Tink, 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 tink. Welcome back to the Gingerling Podcast. With a dog on the table in a suitcase. Uh, marbles in a suitcase. Marbles in a suitcase. This episode Wait, is brought to you by Nature Box. If you're going to snack, be smart about it. Don't oh, touch that junk food. Yeah. Start snacking healthy with Nature Box right oh, now. Oh, hell yeah. Nature Box is giving you 50% off your first order when you head to naturebox.com. What a deal. Julian, which includes strawberry lemonade, fruit stars, which are love and life and the best snack. I love them so they much. They sent us like 30 bags of those. They sent us 20 bags. I think we're out. We're like, almost out. We We've actually cleared left. through a good a good bit of them. Mm, anyway, get yourself so. some Nature Box. <laughs> it is delicious. Snack smart. And also brought to you by Me Undies. Oh, There's a reason I've been talking about Me Undies for months now. They're the softest, most comfortable underwear you ever wear. Once you try them, you won't want to wear anything else. This month is a rainbow confetti print right here. Oh, hell called yeah. Called Celebrate. Oh, oh Try Me God. Undies today. By going to meundies.com slash Jen and Julian, and you'll save 20% off your first pair. Thank you, sponsors. Thank you, sponsors. We got two fucking legit OG sponsors. We got two powerhouses. Hell yeah. I got my beep in his suitcase, and we just out here. I have my minion shawl on. Is that a shawl now? It's like a different item every episode. And my purple Bayfield, Wisconsin shirt that Julian had me printed on last minute trips. Looks nice. You know, I'm just out here living my best life. Don't ever talk to me or my son again. (laughs) Marvels is legit in his suitcase on the table. He so loves if you're it. just listening, just imagine what what you could be. It's a rolling right suitcase now. with a dog in it, but it has like mesh so he can see out of it, and he really likes it a lot. Marvel, do you want me to lay it down flat, honey, so that you can have like like a little crate, sort of? Shall we? Shall we show its versatility? Look at this. Oh, my God. So it rolls so it's around. Called the, it's called the snoozer. Wow. Hello there. Okay, I'm going to tip you, all right? It's going to be very disorienting for a second. Oh, there he go. Wow, my goodness. All right, now let me just fix your blanket before you crawl away. Okay, here we go. Julian Dunn got up and turned the fan on because, A, he's had it with us, and, B, he's hot because he's had it. We're literally making daddy hot from how frustrated he is no, at it's our not, suitcase. It's, not you. it's just the lights in this room. All right, let me fix, fix your little bum so you can <clears throat> put all of you on the blanket, honey. Wow, good struggle noise. Okay, how's that? Good? Okay, now you sit there, and then mommy's going to open up this second roof oh my here. God. Oh, my God. It's like you have a moon roof. Wow, my goodness. And then I'm going to roll it up. And Oh, sorry. <laughs> I clipped it and it knocked him in his little noggin. Okay, and then, oh, my. Wow, we. Now we have a little crate. I'm sorry for bumping it into something. You can just lay back down. It's okay. Oh, Oh my god, there he go. There he go. Okay. Don't ever talk to me about that again. I wasn't going to talk to you, your son. <gasps> wow, marble. It's a marble rolling suitcase just for you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, hell yeah. Marble, come this way and poke your head out this roof. I don't think he knows where he is. Marble, I don't think. Come here. Hey. Hey. Oh, move. Come this Back way. Up. Come here. Look it. Oh, wow. Would you look at that? <laughs> wow, bud. Oh, but come back over here. You live I want to see your huh? face over here. Come oh, here. there he go. There he is. Wow. So, thank you, Marble, for joining us. Thank you, Marble, for that wonderful segment. <laughs> I'm surprised you like me, like at all. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised anybody likes me or has an ounce of patience for me at all. <laughs> Speaking of you, on the last episode of our podcast, one of the top com- last episode, yeah, one Pizza of the top party. comments was that we should do. Don't even get me started, which is like a ranting. Game. Don't even get me started. And how does it work? You basically pick a topic or thing out of yeah, a, we put them in this cup. Cup. And whatever it is, you just got to start. Don't even about. get me start. But exactly. they're not. They're not all like bad. Some of them are good, but some of them are definitely like for me or for you. Or yeah. So th- you can steal. A, it'll be random, but there's a couple personal personalized ones that we put in there for like specifically one of us. Don't even get me started. Don't even get me started. <laughs> 
on this game, which is called Don't Even Get Me Started. All right, so we're going to start playing. You guys wanted it, so we said why not. Jenna's going to pull from the hat first, and here we go. Don't even get Jenna started. And thank you for your comment and your suggestion. Thank you for your suggestions. Because let's do it. Every week, guys, we check the comments for new suggestions, so just keep that in mind. Oh, this says renting your house. Don't even get me started. Oh, my God. Okay, for one, we're sitting in this room. Right, it doesn't need to be that. <laughs> that was, that was, yeah, that was a lot for the first, for the first round of the cup. <laughs> we're sitting in, in this room. Let's address this room oh, right man, here. You guys can't even see what's going on There's in here. There's a door that goes to the outside behind us. And, uh... I think we have termites over there because Probably. there's like termite dust back we de- there. We definitely don't not have termites. <laughs> and so our green screen, you know, which a lot of you guys actually funded for us when we started the, the Twitch stream. We were like, we're going to get a green screen. That's what we did. We invested it into the green screen so that we could have this place uh, to play video games and do the podcast. And it has water damage on the end of it right over here because the door that is full of termite dust and things has a giant gap. And during that like three month period of like we got nonstop torrential rain in Southern California for some reason, it got water damage on it along with the garage and like all kinds of stuff. Our plumbing in this house is god awful. Like we have to tell people like I'm really sorry but the plumbing is like terrible. So there are more toilets in this work that in this house that don't work than work. Right. We have like Two working <clears throat> toilets, pretty much. Two point five working toilets in which this is, entire house, which is nice. But we should have more than that, like in our bedroom, for example. It's not nice that having two toilet, working toilets in a house with like six bedrooms or like six rooms. Like the that. toilet in the bedroom doesn't really work that no. well. We like to, that's the worst. Going back to your other point, though, don't it's even get me started toilet. on the gaps underneath every single door to the outside. Yeah, we had, we had a cockroach walk into the living room the other day. Well, the door was open. Yeah, but I don't know. If that's where it came from. It. It came from outside. What makes you think that he was in the living room? He came from the kitchen. We never had a cockroach. That's not so much the issue. That's not true. We've had cockroaches here. Not like a problem. What about the one that I found over here and wrapped up for you for Christmas? There was... That was really sweet, by the way. That's what I'm saying. The gap is underneath the door. It's not necessarily because the kitchen door was open for half an hour, which it was. Fair enough. The gaps underneath the door is like an inch big, guys. Yeah. So if we lived in anywhere with real weather, we would likely freeze. (laughs) Well, yeah, that's a real thing. Like you, You cover your windows with towels and saran wrap and stuff to save heat and everything. Yeah. But also, like on your door, you put like a thing under there for a dress off because it would cost you a fortune to heat and cool the place. You know what I mean? Another thing. Every winter, I think every single Christmas, it's tradition for our office to just completely start leaking. <laughs> so as an early gift in the holidays, instead of you know Christmas carol- carolers or, or some sort of dessert, we get some water in the office. And of course, it's like that room. Right. It's like and the most our expensive landlord, equipment. Our like, landlord assured exposed. us. I was like, because right when we saw the place, I was like, is that, is that water damage on the floor? And he was like, yeah, but it was a leak and it's totally fixed now. And I'm like, are you sure? Like, it, it, I don't know. And he's like, yeah, no, it's all fixed. It's all fixed. And so I'm like, all right, because we're thinking about making this an office. Like, there's going to be just about every piece of electronic equipment that we own. Like, as long as you can, because like we, the first time we looked at the house, we went in the office room and we looked up and we we're like, oh, there's like some discoloration on the ceiling. I wonder if there was water damage. We brought it up. And he, the floor. He assured us completely fine. Now we've been here for three years in October. Every single year, there's been a leak. Uh, some sometime in in the holiday season area, like Christmas, um, like December, January, and. Um, yeah, that's cool. That's fucking cool. But it's like the worst part to me about renting your place is that if stuff goes wrong, you have to tell your landlord and then it's up to them about how and when they fix it. How is the most important thing right. for me. It's not when they fix because it. It's he, how. Because he they- has his own like crew of people that are like in cahoots with him that will do things, you know, will be like, this is broken. Can you send someone to come fix it? And he'll be like, sure, sure. No problem. And he'll send his buddy over and they'll do something that like really doesn't fix the problem. Problem at all, and but, then you're like, but you know well, that he fuck? picked that person because he's paying little to no money for it. Right. So that's that's the biggest so nothing, thing. Is like, nothing ever gets fixed. Nothing really you, gets you properly fixed. They you get, don't have the like, choice. Band aids put it. on top of them. Right. But then you get to live there. Yeah. So uh, there's there was that's one. Why don't even get me started on. There renting. was one repair that the landlord called and had someone come that fixed it. It was our gate. It was the only time they ever sent a repair mm. that actually fixed a problem. Mm. 
Every other time. No. Don't even get us started, guys, because we'll just start complaining at you about this house and renting it. But I like this house and I like living here. It just would be nice if we could fix things. Yeah. Like after that big rain and the leak and everything, like the garage is falling apart. Yeah. The ceiling of the garage got all over my car. It's like, if we're just hanging out in our room, are we going to fall through the garage? I shouldn't have got you started. <laughs> <laughs> all right, it's my turn. I guess so. Oh, man. People with dog suitcases. No! How dare you! <laughs> Don't even get me started. What is wrong with people with dog suitcases? Okay, maybe <laughs> I would have been the person. I can't rant for this. You have a dog yeah, suitcase. Yeah, maybe I would have been that person that would rant about dog suitcases before I was a person with a dog suitcase. There's no way I can rant for this. Go ahead. You got it. I, you wrote it. People with dog suitcases. Why do you even have a dog and why does that dog have legs? Look at him. He's that done, is not he's, a dog. He's done walking. Sorry. He decided he was done walking for his birthday, and I he honored that. He is not that. a dog. Yeah, he's a glorified he, stuffed he is, animal. He is, that's even a little too much credit. Taboo. Why, why are you taking them in suitcases? I mean, I hate ranting he for this because it. for Marble, it kind of works because he really is just like, he a, likes like it. a little rat. Hi, Babu. Marble, you a little rat? You like it in there, honey? He's happy. He's, he's just He's become so... So, uh... Why do you want to deny his happiness? I don't. I just... I can't argue for this. I'm this person, though. I'm by default, I am this person. Uh, will you wheel him around in this? No. I, I will never wheel him around. <gasps> unless you ask me to. And then I'll absolutely wheel him around right away. <laughs> 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 wow, you really folded pretty quickly there. Yeah, that was, that was not the best. All right, let you me would? skip. I need You'd to skip this one. I'd wheel him around if you asked me to. Will you wheel him around? Right now? <laughs> no, I mean like fully extended walking around yeah. in public. Are you kidding me, dude? I'll fucking wheel him around. Anyone looks at me weird, I'll be like, dude, if you're going to look, look at someone weird today. Look how happy he is. If you're going to look at someone with that look today, you probably picked me as the right person to look at like that. <laughs> no. Um, I think, I think like I was the same as you. Like before we got this dog suitcase from Apples, we, we were like, oh, dog suitcase is like, what a fuck show that is. Like, why would you ever do that? They're dogs. They walk. He loves it. But not only is he getting old, I mean, you know, he's, he's, he's nine, which, you know, do you want to be close he's healthy to and mommy? everything, but he's definitely like lost the, the desire to be an active animal. And, and, you know, like he's fine just sitting he on the couch all day. Like he, he doesn't mind. Yeah. It. He appreciates like a little walk, but that's about it. Yeah. Like even if he's you're not outside, he's, he's not he's never gonna like go play in the yard and like chase things or play fetch or <laughs> give a fuck right about now. anything. He really doesn't care. Like he just wants to sit for the rest of his life. All right, and that's on? okay. You can do that. You I feel can. bad ranting. Marble, I'm sorry. I love you. He likes his suitcase. Okay, you pick now. It's a, por or I pick it's a portable one? alternative to walking. P A T W. It's a P A T W, guys. <laughs> It's a pot. Pot. <laughs> where's, Pottle. Where's Marble's pot? Can we put him in it? <laughs> <laughs> it's a pot. Should I pick another one or should you? Pottle. Uh, you pick another one. You didn't want to rant about it. Guilty. Oh. <laughs> we put each of the dog's names in there. Guilty. Don't even Don't get, even get me started, started on Guilty. <laughs> Guilty is... Guilty is Debbie's dog. And we're watching Gildy for the, a couple days. So Gildy's with us. So we have four dogs. Gildy, the first thing about Gildy is she doesn't listen to a word I say. <laughs> she really doesn't. <laughs> she doesn't listen to you at all. I say, Gildy, come. And she stays. And I walk at her. And she runs underneath the table away from me. <laughs> I try to feed her. And she runs away. <laughs> I try to take her for walks. And she runs away. <laughs> I, I say, Gildy, sit. And she barks. <laughs> <laughs> She's the sweetest little girl, but she doesn't listen to a word. <laughs> we love her so much. Um, she listens to me a little bit. Yeah, well, you you have your weird like language with dogs that I don't have. Well, the the thing that's really funny to me about Gildy is that she's like her whole body is super hard. <laughs> <laughs> She feels like a hard sausage. Yeah, it's like the opposite of all three of our dogs because yeah, they're all like such Peach is so mushy and yeah. cuddly, and Gilby is just like a hard sausage. Yeah, but um, 
I caught her when we let Peachy run out in the front yard because Peachy loves that. Um, Gildy jammed her head under the fence and tried to <laughs> wiggle her hard sausage body out into the street. It's just, don't even get me started on Gildy because Gildy is a terrier <laughs> and it's like the complete opposite of the dogs we have. We have she's Italian a dog. greyhounds. She's a dog. We have basically cats. Yeah, we, have we have cats. Like, like really, really tame, weird cats. And then we suddenly have a dog in the house who behaves like a proper dog would. She eats like, her food in two seconds. Yeah, like and scarves sit up her food. And cry. Like pees and poops on walks. Yeah. Right? Like like needs to get out and like, you know, do her thing. Uh and we'll dig and try to get through a fence. Like our dogs are like literally not that at all. They no, don't behave like that. They have none of those mannerisms. I um, guess in that sense I've never actually had a dog. Yeah, we've never had any dog. Because <laughs> even the dogs I had before I met you, like my mom's dog, Puppy, like Puppy's not a dog. No, Puppy's not Puppy's a dog. Puppy's a marble. Like a glorified little daughter. Yeah. Like a but queen she, daughter. She probably gets carried more than Marble does. Yeah. Puppies. Oh, my God. Puppies. My mom brings puppies bed literally everywhere she goes. Yeah, that your, includes your on mom, flights. and. Your mom sewed handles onto a dog bed. So if you, so if you can imagine, just, yeah, yeah like a dog bed that you fold in half like a taco, she sold, sewed handles on the top so she could carry the dog like a fucking briefcase. So puppy would be sleeping like at your mom's house. She'd... Just fold it, grab the handles, carry her, put her in the car, fold it, grab her, take her out. So it's like puppy doesn't even move when she travels. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's a sweetheart, though. She never, like, snaps at people, which is nice. Yeah, puppy's really great. But All things Gildy, aside about Gildy, she Gildy. is a sweetheart, and it's been a joy to have her. Gildy, uh, okay, Gildy, just, Gildy's default position is mouth open, teeth out. That's another thing. You. That's another thing. So she'll go in for, like, licks, and you'll get teeth. <laughs> and you'll be like, Gildy, stop it. Uh, no, Gildy, and you know what's she nice is like she's, you, she, uh, she's used to sleeping in a crate, but when we watch dogs, we don't really do what they normally do. We like, yeah, I was like, Mom, can like, she sleep in the bed? And Mom's like, if she wants to. We're like and the fun aunt and uncle what? who just like break Gildy all the Gildy loves to sleep in the bed. She sleeps in Julian's legs. Yeah, so Gildy's been sleeping with me, which is nice. I really enjoy that. So, yeah. She's really cute. She's cute. But she a naughty. She a naughty. She a naughty. <laughs> but who are we to talk? Our dogs are the naughtiest. True. Peach, like, <laughs> we have no, a no, giant no. blanket you, you in our it. living room with a picture on it of Peach tearing up toys. You have a Peach card in there, so. Oh, yeah, I have a Peach card. It. That's yours. Oh, this is mine now? Oh, All right. sorry. Morning talk shows. Did you write this? Maybe. Morning talk shows while hosts drink wine. <laughs> Oh my God, Julie! Don't even get me started. Hold a copy, and you fucking Kathy Lee or whatever the fuck. What are you doing with your time yeah, no, and your energy? I, can't, I, I don't can't, understand that. I can't get into it because it just feels like a. I don't know if you've ever met anyone that's an alcoholic or like a recovering alcoholic. Yeah. The the message of whatever you guys are trying to do, like. Having fun, like a casual morning fun talk show. You're just reiterating that you guys are middle-aged women, and the only way for you to, like, get loose and have fun is to have a 7 a.m. glass of Chardonnay. Like, that's ridiculous to This me. isn't a joke, by the way. Like, I, like if, you, if you're curious about if this exists, because I was, I, when I saw this for the first time, I was like, wine. I couldn't believe it. At 7 in the morning. We were in Texas for South By, and I turned on the TV while I was getting ready, and it was 9 a.m., 9-something a.m. Texas time, which is is 7 something a.m. L.A. Yeah. time and they're sitting there with wine glasses. Yeah. Not only is that like for me it's like confusing because it's like that I, when I'm watching morning shows I want to relate to what I'm watching. Right. I want to watch them having their coffee. I want to watch them talking about traffic whatever. When they're sitting there with glasses of wine I can't not only can I not relate but I feel so frustrated at the fact that that's okay. Yeah. It's like People watch this. Families watch this. Is this just spreading the message that this is okay? Like, let's just yeah. have wine in the morning. Like, it would, I just feel I don't like it that. would be hard for me if I was, you know, not that any show should cater to any particular audience, but it would be really hard for me if I was like recovering from a, an addiction or alcohol or something. And you can't even watch a morning show without being yeah, reminded. Yeah, you can't even watch like the way that you would like to get your information that day exactly. it's without not, watching people get drunk. It's not even they, like, they don't go hand in hand to me. I don't right. know who decided that that connection was a thing. Well, it's like sense. I imagine if I was if, if I was in recovery and I was going to watch, say, a football game. I know that there's going to be like 80% of the commercials for beer. And I'm aware of that. Yeah. And you're ready for and that. And there's people there drinking. And but the athletes drinking. aren't sitting there. No, no, that's not loose. my point. That's not my point. <laughs> when you're, when you're in certain settings and you're, you're sensitive to that sort of thing, you can prepare yourself. For sure. For, for, you know, for that setting, morning talk shows, you're like, that's the last thing you'd expect. 
Yeah. Like this is this is just traffic. This is yeah. just e news. Like this is just you know, like stupid things that I can just like mindlessly get ready to. And they're drinking wine. Like, but and I'm not it even. It just tr- sensitizes you to it. That's exactly you're right. Like, that's exactly right. Oh, I'm also a 45 year old woman or 50 something or whatever, and you know they're having a glass of wine at seven in the morning. So why can't I? So maybe I should. And then that's yeah. how you get a problem. Yeah. Also, I they they. they when they have the wine, they start they start behaving like incredibly like I've seen them be really rude. I was watching I forget their name because I don't I don't really know who any of them are. But uh, there was a show that they it was a morning show. It might, might have been Hoda Copy. I can't remember. But one of them was in the studio. One of them was on on like the street, you know, live. And in the studio, the one who was the anchor there was with Bill Nye, and she was being fed questions to ask Bill Nye like science questions, and he would. Be Bill Nye and be hilarious and charming and answer Mm -hmm. them and be awesome. And as he was answering these questions that were, you know, sort of scientific, but also like he was giving them in layman's terms so everyone could understand it. Mm -hmm. She was literally rolling her eyes. And like it was like like visibly just being annoyed. And 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 like producers were laughing and it was like a bit that they were just like mocking the guest. And I couldn't understand it. And it like it was on Reddit. That's why I saw it because I wasn't watching it. And that was the first time I was like, wow, I like really just don't like this at all. This whole culture of like, this is my like morning show where I'm going to be the sassy, you know, wine drinking host and whoever's in my way, like get out of here with this like actual content and, and intelligence. Get off my set with that. Yeah. I mean, I feel like there's plenty of shows where drinking or, you know, that type of thing makes sense to me, but there's something about a news-related morning show that just doesn't say wine to me. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Don't even get us started on that. Too too late. You got us started on that. It just feels weird it feels and gross. Wrong. It feels wrong. I don't know, man. But um, I also, like, I feel like it come from a world, and as do most people, where, like, when you go to work, you, you don't get to be drunk. It's... <laughs> when you go to school, you don't get to be drunk. Like, they're, drinking and being professional are two different things, you know? Yeah. Not that I'm one to talk, because I've made tons of drunk videos, and we've had drinks on the podcast. But I think that there's a difference between making something inherently lighthearted or, a, like... I don't. Do, do you understand? I what totally you're understand what you're saying. Like the norm of getting to work and pouring yourself a glass of wine, yeah. is it, like it becomes about that if rather we, than that being well, the yes. occasion and if the exception to the rule. It, like your drunk videos are the exception to the rule. You don't make right. drunk videos. You have made drunk videos. Right. We have done drunk podcasts. But it's like if we podcasted every day and every day we drank on the podcast. At 7 a.m. <laughs> but I mean, regardless yeah, of yeah. even the time of day, yeah. that's fucking wild. Yeah. I, I think I would die. I can't drink every day. Well, yeah, I mean... I would be sick. Yeah. I mean, like, the biologic... Yeah, like, w- with the effects of the alcohol sick. alone, I, you know, like... But not speaking in terms of that, like, that aside, the actual physical and physiological effects of drinking that much and that early, like, aside, just... I don't know if that's the content I would be wanting to put out. I want to be mm-hmm. taking part of but, in the world. But people love them and feel like, yeah, oh my God, I love getting my news from you with your glass of wine. Well, I don't think young people love them. Girl, bye. No, no. No young people love that. I don't think, right? Not that I know of. I don't really even watch that show because it feels like garbage. Yeah. Sorry. All right. Don't even get me that started. Uh, no, no offense. No. <laughs> no offense. I'm offense. All right. My, mine is don't even get me started on people who abuse area chat. That's yours. Do oh, you this one? don't even get me started. So I've been playing a lot of Elder Scrolls, obviously. So what is area chat, babe? So you put on your headphones or whatever, and there's voice channels. So you can be in like your guild channel. You can be in the general area chat. So people around you, if you're in a group, or you're doing a dungeon, you can be in your dungeon chat. You talk to the other people in the dungeon. So I like to always be on area chat. So like anytime I'm riding my horse around, you know, just care if people are talking. And there are people that just straight up like leave their mics on and then like blast music into the area chat. Like some of the most foul like re- like so much explicit language like racist and- when you know that there's like 13 year old kids playing that game listening to the area chat who also engage in the most foul language insults to each other yeah it's insane it's been happening for centuries in online video games right Right. Even when I was playing Halo, you just told on me Xbox. that there's a player unknown battleground area chat, and it's all full of like racist, awful yeah. shit talking. Oh yeah, it's just I pure garbage. I want to hear it though. 
I want to fucking hear it. Yeah, you hear it once, you then you understand what it is, and you never turn it on. I again. know, but I like almost don't believe you because I feel like even when you, you think watch, so, but that's that's the crazy thing, right? Like that, that game is it, not. It's not like that, but. The, Okay, you rewind back to like 2000 and fucking five or whatever, whenever like Halo came out. Yeah. I don't know exactly the year, but when you, when you got on that and the dawn of Xbox Live started and it was mm-hmm. like you're playing online video games with other people and you can talk to them with your headset and you'll never see their face and they'll never right. see your face. You don't know where each other live. And it's you all completely have random. gamer tags you and have, no one knows you who all you have are. anonymous gamer tags. Right. That was like, for me at least, I know it existed before this on PC gaming and a lot of other platforms, but for me that was the, the first time I was exposed to just like like talking shit on online video games mm-hmm. right like your mom sucks like you know like you know it's super mild like your mom sucks like you know what i mean <laughs> but it was like horrible things that people would say to each other on the regular racist things included you hear it all the time and now you fast forward to 2017 where it's like online video games have only gotten infinitely more advanced and uh, pre- prevalent you know on different platforms and so i was playing PUBG, and to hear that it's like Wow, like it, like it, people are really still <laughs> shitty. People we, like really still, still want to be racist online. All. It's you know, it's like we haven't evolved at all in that sense. But uh, I agree with you. It's, it for me, it's like it takes you out of that experience where you're like, there's so much about there's so much positive that comes with playing online video games in a game you like because you're like, I'm competing with other people at this game we both love. There's right. something really cool about that, and then you hear. Like someone blasts a bunch of fucking nonsense in the chat room. You're like, oh, I oh. kind of hate it. everything. Like, why am I even on here? You know what I mean? Plus, I I play a lot with people because you you match up randomly for dungeons a lot. Yeah, and they'll have a headset on, and you'll hear hear, and it shows you a little icon about when your mic is like being used. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It tells you when your when your right. audio's yeah. But it amazes me how many people sit with their headset on and go. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. Ah, stop. And you can they can see that their mic is going and they don't fucking know anything about it. Don't even get me started. I'm like, can you not see in the bottom right corner of your whole screen that your mic is going off right now? Like, figure it out. Mute yourself for five seconds. Mute yourself until you have to say something. Like, what are you doing? Like, you, you just have to sit there and listen to them, like, breathe and struggle noise. And this, like, the, the button pushing sound here. Hold on. This shit. So I'm sitting in the living room and all you can hear. Hold on, I unplugged my fucking. Yeah, I got it. You got it? All you can hear is this through your headset. (laughs) (laughs) Like louder than the game sound. Yeah, like I'm fucking. I'm playing too, man. I don't need to hear your buttons. Shut up. (laughs) Okay, stop it now. Stop it right now. Oh my god. (laughs) <laughs> I hate that. But um, I'm trying to think of some of the funniest ones. Uh, the one the other day when I was sitting there, I'm like, Julian, come here. Like, he was listening to a song that was so explicit, I can repeat none of the lyrics. <laughs> then he kept chanting them out loud afterwards, too. And then he kept saying, he would call out specific other people's usernames and go, nobody duel this motherfucker, he's a little bitch, yeah. <laughs> Like it's probably like a thirteen year old. You that's I mean? that's it though. That's like it's that culture. It's like it still exists. Like you're on anonymous gaming live and do whatever you want. Oh man, it's super funny. <laughs> All right, I also on. I also until I started playing Elder Scrolls, I did not realize how many people play like super high. Yeah, that's the thing. But like if I were to play a video game and I was into like getting super high, I feel like I wouldn't want to play online with other people. Yeah. Like to each their own. To each their own. But like I don't know how I could just get super high and be like Yo, what's up, dude? Uh, Yeah. Yeah. It's like a weird stereotype being fulfilled, you know? (laughs) What's your name? Me and Caitlin were playing with this guy that literally, I don't know what it meant. He wouldn't explain what it meant, but he would be like, all right, hold on one sec, because you're in a group of four. He's like, hold on a second. I'm going to take a hit. And you're like, okay, man, do you whatever. And then you just go, yeah, you got to keep stacking them. Just got to stack them. Just keep stacking them, stack them, stack them. Was it like hard drugs and shit? I don't know what Fuck. it was on. Jesus Christ. But I like, couldn't breathe. You got to keep stacking them, man. I couldn't. What does that mean? Keep stacking them. <laughs> we were like, you're not stacking Kayla them. Kayla and I had never done the dungeon before. <laughs> And we're like, all right, what do we do here? And he was like, yeah, you just got to stack them. You got to keep stacking them. Stacking what? I don't know. I don't know. 
I don't know his life. Don't even get me started <laughs> on people who don't wear comfortable, wonderful me undies. Oh like these. my god! Don't even get me started. Dude. I've been telling you guys about me undies for so long, and the reason is oh, they're the the softest underwear you ever put on your bum. Okay, oh. they are softer than cotton. Okay, it's made of modal fabric, sustainably sourced, Daddy and made from. Marble. Micromodal fabric that's three times softer than cotton, guys. If you're used to buying packs of uncomfy, boring, stiff underwear that can only come in gray, black, or tan, Meandies will change that for you, okay? This is this this month's design, actually, okay? It's actually really nice. It's called Celebrate. It's the celebrate. rainbow polka dot. To celebrate, guys. It's to celebrate. Holiday. Right now, you guys can go on MeUndies.com uh, and check out all of their different designs. This is just one of them. They come out with new original designs every single month, which is so cool. And let me tell you, there's nothing cooler and, and nicer for your wardrobe to get a fresh new set of undies every single month. You don't realize how much you need that until you get Amazing. MeUndies. It's, it's pretty awesome. Uh, try on me, MeUndies today right now by going to MeUndies.com. Go right now before Celebrate Pattern is gone. They will leave soon. You have to get them while they're hot. Uh, MeUndies.com slash Jenna Julian. Get 20% off your first pair. You have to feel for yourself. Why MeUndies? Has this been on your butt before? Possibly. Julian! Would you just put them on your face? Yeah. No, they're clean. They're not dirty. <laughs> but they're not uh, fresh out of the package. <laughs> 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 get 20% off your uh, oh, first yeah. pair and free shipping at MeUndies.com oh, slash yeah. Julian Salamino. What, babe? What? Do you think I'm gross? You know, I'm. I just got so triggered that I put my finger on my eye and I moved my contact, and I can't really see anymore. So I caused you to do that. You're saying? I'm triggered. All right. Also brought to you by Nature Box, guys. If you're gonna snack, snack smart about it. All right, guys. Be, don't touch the yes, junk food. Yes, daddy. Get Nature Box. This is our favorite one. It's strawberry lemonade food stars. And let me tell you how awesome Nature Box is. I've talked about this snack like a hundred times. And they were like, you know what? Fuck it. We're going to send them 20 bo- twenty a box of 20 of these in, you know, in a package to us. They normally send us like an array of different snacks. They were like, no. We're, we listen to you guys. We know what you like. So right now, you guys, head over to naturebox.com and have a look at their ma- massive snack catalog. There's a hundred to choose from. Pick your faves, and they get delivered right to your door, which is really nice. You don't have to go shopping for them, and you don't have to worry about bad ingredients and, and fake things going into your snack. You can get NatureBox. Um, whether you're vegan, gluten-free, or looking for low-fat, no-added sugar, NatureBox has all the snacks for you. And if you ever try a snack you don't like, they will replace it for free. You're the real MVP. So you can order as much as you want, as often as you want, with no minimum purchase, and you can cancel any time. Right now, go to naturebox.com slash Jenna Julian, and they are giving you 50% off your first order with that URL. Guys, check it out. You won't be sorry. You'll like it. Jenna can't see out of her contact. (laughs) What just happened? I don't know. (sighs) These smell good. These smell like our detergent. That smells like you butt boy. No, it doesn't. (laughs) They're clean. I got them out of the laundry. <laughs> it doesn't smell like my butt. All right, moving on. Oh, yes. I'm so glad I, I picked this one. What? What are you doing? I'm trying to put my foot on you. I didn't ask you for that. I'm trying to relax. I'll the, be over here now. Don't even get me I started. I can't see. I can't sit up. It's not my fault. Why is your contact? Oh, God. It's coming out. Oh, my God. It is coming out. What the fuck, dude? <laughs> Oh, no. Do you want me to just let you finish, or should I talk about while it's out? Oh, no. Why did it come out? Well, I gotta, like, this might hurt to put it back in. Ah! It came out because I, like, knocked it into my eye a little, you know? Does it hurt, or are you okay? Oh, it was actually okay. (laughs) (laughs) My hands are pretty clean. All right, we'll do a couple more. We don't have to do all of them. Fine, that's fine. All right. Don't even get me started. On, on the Katy Perry YouTube live stream. Oh no! I don't, even, I don't even need to get loud for this one. I just, oh, I'm no! just, I'm just confused. Uh oh. Honestly. Uh oh. Okay. When I first saw that Katy Perry was on YouTube and going live and doing yoga and meditation and some like random videos, I was like, first I was like curious. I was like, you asked me. Well, I, I, you I, said, is Katy Perry a YouTuber? Well, I, I don't know. Yeah, because I didn't know. I was like, is this just something I don't know? Is she a YouTuber? And like, I just didn't understand. Uh, 
So she does these live streams, and actually today there's one actually currently going on, and I'm not yeah, sure if it's still like happening. Yeah, twenty four hours, I thought. Yeah, and I'm not sure if it's still happening by the time her, this podcast goes live. It's but called you Witness, should check. isn't it? These because live streams her, are so weird. Her song weird. is called Witness, so you're like being a witness to her life. You get it? <sighs> it's it's stupid. I don't like it. I think it's stupid. I think I think this this live stream that she's done has given me an insight into who she is as a person that I don't like. And like I, Ooh. I felt zero way about Katy Perry before. We were talking about this. Like, I, I, you know, her music's good. Like, I don't really care. I don't like her or dislike her. I feel nothing about her. But then I saw these live streams, and I saw like how she was acting and how she was treating her producers and assistants and guests and just like acting in general. And I was like, I don't like your attitude. Like, you're just kind of a mean person. It feels like, and you're just displaying that on the internet like for whatever reason to promote your album or whatever it is like it just it all felt really weird to me okay so if you're a fan of Katy perry i just want to give a little little disclaimer here i'm not hating on that like you can be a fan of whoever you want and and maybe i'm wrong i imagine if you were a fan of Katy perry her live streams appear to them very different than it appeared to you 100 percent. because i'm I'm coming in like read them multiple different ways yeah but to I me, there were I a watched, couple times when I she watched was... Katy Perry take a 15 minute meditation break and then no, wake she up, took... wake up and yell at people downstairs to be quiet, to be quiet. <laughs> like you're in a production house full of people. Like, how can anybody be quiet? What I'm wondering, though, is like, does she not realize <laughs> that this is all live and like it's not the greatest look to be no. just like yelling at people and being mean to people? Well, I, a lot of the comments are people being like, I love Katy Perry. This just shows like how cool of a person she is. Like, I mean, that's what some people are seeing. To me, I definitely agree with you that I saw some things that made me be like, oh my God. Also, also. She, they were sitting down watching a bunch of her videos because I watched because I saw Elijah, Liza Koshy tweet out a link that she was going to be on there. I'm like, that's so fucking rad because everybody likes Liza. And so I go there and watch and it felt very much like, she talked to Liza for three seconds. And then and started then, watching her own videos. No, no, no. Then her two friends, like her actual friends came in and she sort of just like dropped Liza and let Liza walk around and introduce herself to the other people in the house and then hung out with her two friends. Then they sat down and watched some of Katy Perry's videos, her own videos. And she like all of a sudden in the middle, like as if that's not, you know, whoever planned that is. Yeah. But if, but again, if you're a Katy Perry super fan, that's super cool because you're watching Katy Perry watch her own videos and talk about things that happen. And you know what I mean? Yeah. I can understand why some people are like, this is so rad. And other people are like, wow, this is pretty self-absorbed but during all of that so you have Liza Koshy on the couch and her like stylist or you know the people that she works with and is friends with she just turns around like in the middle because she kept being like pause pause we're wanting to go back okay that yeah oh my god just screenshot that okay yes keep going and then she turns around she goes can I get a humidifier please like, to the, your average person seems so outrageous, but to her, that's, like, you know, her life. And she just asks the person for a humidifier and when again, she needs one. And, again, I don't know her story or her <laughs> to situation. To me, it was like, girl. <laughs> yeah, and I don't know her what, what her life's about. Like, I don't know her as a person. I don't right. know anything. I don't know anything. But, nor but do, this nor seemed, do you know what it's like. But this seemed like a, a wrong decision went from, going, from going from not showing any of this or any of... Uh, you know, who she is or whatever, or planned or live or not live, to just live streaming her kind of snapping at people. It felt like to me, at least, like, you know, there's a lot of ways to do the whole telethon model, I think, that she's trying to do for promo or whatever it is that I think works. And one way is to, like, make sure your talent is acting incredibly appealing and not like the way she's been acting. Hmm. Like I, I have, and like there was, she did but like a therapy that, session. There's with plenty of like, people that think that what she's doing is appealing. I don't think so. I don't, I don't know how that's possible. <laughs> it's very possible. She did like a therapy session and posted it to YouTube. Like, what the fuck is that? Yeah, don't get me started on that. What even don't is even that? Get me started. What even is that, don't dude? Even get me started on that. She just and she talks like she's pretty zonked out. Well, I can. I can't that's that's just what I think. I think I, well, I'm not asking you to. I'm just. I'm just saying. Like the, her, her tone of voice just sounds really completely out of it. I don't know. I feel like I just probably offended a lot of Katy Perry fans, but I'm. I'm just trying to be honest. Like it was just a very weird thing to turn on YouTube and see what's on live and see. Well, that. I mean, think of it this way: Katy Perry just performed at the YouTube Creator Summit, like which was cool. But you also don't know what this deal looks like with YouTube. Do you know what I mean? So this could be 
like she signed a deal with YouTube to do this 24 hour live stream for however many days leading up to the release of her album like this, which is why we have YouTubers going on there like Patrick Starr and Liza Koshy and stuff. It feels like a gigantic cross promotion inked on paper a long time ago. And parts of it do definitely feel like Katy Perry doesn't exactly want to fulfill some aspects of the 24 hour live stream yeah. like maybe in theory it seems like a, a cool thing to agree to like yeah you're we're gonna put you in this house and it's all just like we'll have friends come over and like you hang out and just do whatever you want but it's like it's a 24 hour grind for her you know which i imagine fucking sucks but that that that's that's what happens when you sign yeah. a deal to stream 24 hours live with youtube you're gonna have youtubers on there the katie perry probably doesn't know or you're care. gonna yeah you're gonna have a lot of things to do that you don't really know or care about so i can understand why she's That's coming off point. as snobby it's a good point. but this is also like you you have liza koshi liza koshi on here like i, I could have done with a little more respect you know what i mean it felt very like Oh my god, you're so cute. Okay, let's watch my music videos now. That's what it was. Like how disrespectful to Liza. Like <laughs> Liza's like, taking time out of her schedule. Girl, to come on everyone this show. in this comment section right now is saying, Where's Liza? Like you cannot deny yeah. that this person and YouTube knows that, that this person is contributing to your your yeah. promotion that you know people are coming to watch Katy Perry because they're huge Eliza Koshy fans. The whole thing was and just weird. It felt very fucking weird. So I don't know. It is what it is. But don't even get Julian. I just started. I would be curious to know if like any of you guys saw it and and felt even remotely how I felt, or if maybe you didn't see it at all, or maybe if you saw it and you really enjoyed it. I'd like to know why or like what your thoughts were because it was one of those moments where I watched it and I was like, this just feels really out of place. I don't I don't understand what I'm looking at. I don't know why it's here. I don't know what's going on. Well, it does, it does feel on YouTube a little out of place and that they have this beautiful production house with cameras everywhere. Clearly a gigantic team of people making that happen and cut from camera to camera to camera as she walks through every single room in the house. Like you're talking big brother type of production value, you know? And like, I forgot what I was just going to fucking say. Oh, it it seems weird because it's on YouTube and you have all this production and it's live and you know people usually people. It did when people, look like Big Brother. Even the set looked like Big right. Brother. Well, usually when people are live on YouTube, a they're not traditional celebrities, yeah. and b our version of live feels much more authentic. Like you pull that. up your laptop and it's the fucking webcam. Right. Like yeah. if she was going to be live for twenty four hours a day and even just stuck a laptop like in her room, I'd feel like that would be more exciting than this fake promo, like yeah. having friends over and dinner and conversations. You know. Yeah. Also. And It'd probably be a lot easier for Katy Perry. Yeah. Because you'd be like, ooh, is she going to come in here? I guarantee you there'd be more people watching a live stream of a laptop set up in her room where she might walk by or sit there and hang out. That's or true. Like, you know That's what true. I mean? That's true. The, then the weirdly produced thing that, that is the live stream that she did or is doing. It's on right now, I think. Yeah, it is. Anyway, moving on. Just me, though. That, was, that would be my cup of tea. If someone's going to live stream, like, think about if Gaga just set up a laptop in her room and then, like... Oh, that would get like a hundred thousand. That's so exciting. Whatever. Anyways, Hmm. pulp-free orange juice. Should I hand this over to you? Because don't even get me started. I like. Why are you censoring oranges and orange juice? juice. I hate. I hate this this whole phenomenon. We talked about pizza and cold pizza. I like cold pizza and I like pulp-free orange juice. Not that I have a problem with pulp. I held. I I held my. I held my own in a pretty heated debate a couple months back about pulp versus no pulp and orange juice. And Twitter tweeted at me saying at Twitter said. I think the results are in, and and it, it was uh, you know the, remember when they held up the sign of the wrong people at the uh, yeah it was that but it says pulp or like <laughs> no pulp wins or whatever so I got told by Twitter that I was wrong but let me just say this okay people often say when I say I like pulp in my orange juice why don't you just eat an orange why is that thing why, why does that have anything to do with orange juice just because it comes from oranges doesn't mean I want to have a physical snack I still enjoy the beverage I just like it the way it came out of the fruit, the way it was made. If you're taking the pulp out of it, you're censoring it. Now, let me, I'll concede that people who have an aversion to like solid pieces in their food, in their drink, rather, like that's weird for them. I get that. That like some people can't drink something that has little bits of something, whatever, that's fine. But for people who are like, I like, I think orange juice is nasty with pulp because pulp is nasty and orange juice should have no pulp. Where's the respect? It came from pulp. That's what it is. 
And it's delicious. Have you ever had like freshly squeezed orange juice yeah, right out of like, the orange with you, everything you in don't, it? You don't like orange juice without any pulp because it's still good to me. I, I mean, I'll drink it, but I, I, the whole time I'd just oh, be wishing please. it was like real orange juice. I've seen you drink orange juice. orange juice with no pulp in it. Name a one lot. time. Name one time. In any hotel that we're in and we get breakfast. Most of the times it's those are pulp. <laughs> no, they're not. Most of the time they are. No, they're you're telling me all the like best westerns and stuff that okay, we stay yeah, at, like, where the orange juice concentrate comes out of a fucking machine mixed with water, that those have pulp in them? You lie. Here's my hierarchy. You lie like a rug, boy. Here's my hierarchy. What? Orange juice with pulp. Uh huh. Orange juice with no pulp. Uh huh. Nothing. <laughs> so instead of having nothing, I'll take orange juice with no pulp. I just would highly, vehemently prefer that it had pulp in it. Mm-hmm. And I don't understand the logic that goes behind about, saying orange juice should be without pulp. What about how like nasty it makes your like cup, your glass? Oh, I love it. That's gross. Oh, I love it. It like dries and gets hard on oh, there. Oh, it's so good. Ew. So good and wonderful. Natural. Wait. It's natural? It's natural. Well, name something else that you drink that has the same consistency as orange juice with pulp. Because people like that don't like stuff, drinks with bits in their drink, like I can't really off the top of my head think of something else that you drink on a regular basis that has a texture like that. Frappuccino? No, that's ice. I tried. Um, I'm yeah. thinking of like, um, you know, some kombuchas have like chia seeds in them or whatever. Yeah, but like I said, like certain people have an aversion to things in their liquid. But name something else that people drink on a regular basis that has that consistency. Because I can't think of any, so I can understand why someone would be like, it would be easier for me to not drink That's what makes it so special and unique. Yeah, but that's also what makes it nasty to some people. It's not nasty. Don't say it's nasty. Boy, you're nasty and you need Jesus. I don't need Jesus. I have Jesus. He's in my pocket. (laughs) All right. Do you want to do one more? Sure. Oh, Mabel, you're in a suitcase. Did you just remember? Well. He doesn't know where he is. Oh, oh my God. Oh, I think we got a trump card. <sighs> Don't even get me started on how sexy Ad is. <laughs> oh, my God. That boy is so sex. Should I go get him? Oh, I mean, yeah. I'll go get him. You think he could be near Marble? No. Well, Marble can be in his suitcase. Let's try it. Because you're going to be holding Ad, and Marble's not going to be able to leap across the table. Oh, my God. There's a fly in that light. Sick. Ew. He's in that light. Oh, my God. I want to die. Anyways, though, Ad is super sexy, but I feel terrible because the other night I went to go feed him, and I don't know if you do a lot of reading on hamsters like I do, but apparently you're supposed to not just put their food in their dish. You're supposed to, like, sprinkle it around their cage because He's they're sleeping. foragers. Oh, He's sleeping. I don't want to wake him okay. up. Okay. Because they're foragers, so they, like, it's better for them to, like, run around and have to find food, and they, that's more entertaining because if you just put it in their dish, then you'll end up with a fat, bored hamster, basically. Yeah. But um, the other night I was feeding him, and I had something else in my hand because I was going upstairs. I was going to go to bed because I feed him at night, like right before I go to bed because that's when he's like up and ready for breakfast. So I put his food like on the top of his house. He was in his little sand bath, like his potty. Mm -hmm. And so I put the food on top of his house, like some of the seeds, and it made like kind of a loud noise because it's plastic. Mm -hmm. Like I usually just sprinkle it on there. And for some reason, it like sort of fell out of my hand. So it was more like... Yeah. You know? And he was in his potty, and it was the only time I've ever seen him go like this. He went, <laughs> like, with his mouth open, like, I scared him Aww. from putting the food on his house. <laughs> like, the noise scared him. Yeah, he opened his mouth and was like, <laughs> Oh, poor ass. I know. And I, I bet was even like, that was sex, though. Oh, my God. And I was like, It's just your mommy, baby. Show me a little fishy tail. Oh, he's so cute. Wow, we got a cameo. We got a cameo. They snuck in. I opened the door Julian, for two seconds and they snuck in. How, I know, really? How sexy is that? Oh, Ad is sexy, man. The way he struts around with that long fur, with his tail, always gets his his uh, his bedding and sometimes his poop stuck his in his poop. fur. Oh, my God. It's he gets so that cute. poop in that butt the way, for a boy. The way he walks around and on the couch and butt. then he sits up and cleans himself and he looks at you and then he eats spinach. I mean, he runs on his wheel. I mean, he just exudes sex. All he time. shakes that ass, and it's it's pure sex. It's what is fucking wrong with us? Name a sexier hamster. I'll I can't, wait. I can't. He's you, there is no sexier hamster. Mm-hmm. Are you sure you don't want to do one more? I'll do one more. You want you me to do, do one more? Yeah, you do one more. I can't believe this started off as a, a no Iggy's podcast, and it turned into Iggy's. I know. 
That always seems to happen. Postmates who make decisions for me don't even get me started. <laughs> it happens way more than you'd think it would, where you order something very specific on Postmates and it, and it comes to your door a different thing. It's not what you ordered. Not even close. Sometimes it's just... Such you know, a first world problem. It's a, By the way, it's an incredibly first world problem. And most of these like rants are first world rants. But nonetheless... We are, uh, uh, there have been a lot of times where we've ordered something and they've delivered something completely different, almost something inedible because a lot of times, you know, we're super difficult with what we can eat and can't eat. And they, instead of calling or texting or reaching out to us in any sh- way, shape or form while at the store, they just decide that maybe eh, they be- they probably were okay with this. I know they asked for this brand or this type or this thing, but this looks good enough and they get it. Yeah. And I'm like, what, what am I paying you for at all? What am I using this app for? I love Postmates. They're great. And I Postmates use them all the time. Great. It's just and their customer you get an service occasional is great. person. But you get the occasional person where you're like, yeah. did you not, did you just like, you just wanted to like just bust this. it in that you, day. Yeah, you just wanted to like hammer this, this, this Postmates drive out so you can get the right. cash out and the like leave and like not do a job at all and I make sure the, that customers like as little satisfied as they could possibly the be. Wor- like, one, some of the worst ones that we've had, and Postmates does like fix the problem, by the yeah, way. Like, they, they reach they out. They're good, good with customer service. Support. But the the worst ones that I've had is whenever I'm writing an order for Postmates, I try to make it as specific as I can so that they they can't fuck it up. Yeah, yeah. So I'll write like Daya white ch- deluxe white cheddar mac and cheese vegan uh, with mixed vegetables. Yeah. You know, and then I'll write in parentheses like it's near the box mac and cheese. It's the vegan one. Yeah. You know, it's like holding third hand, shelf basically. up. Yeah. You know, whatever. And then they gave us boxes of deluxe, like regular deluxe craft, dairy mac deluxe and craft, cheese. Right, yeah. And you're like, did you just only in this they whole only description, you only read the word deluxe <laughs> and got like the complete opposite? I don't. I, I can't. I think it's it's just like a, it's a. They they've kind of misjudged what it is that they're being paid to do. They think it's just like I'm grabbing something from the store and giving it to you. It's not like I'm in the world of customer service now, where it's like I have to get. Yeah, but kind some of people specific... are so good though. Some, some people, people are amazing. Are so some people call you. They're like, hey, they have these two flavors. They have one box. Did you me. tell the podcast about when we got Taco Bell that one time and the guy had his son with them? No, I don't. Uh, yeah, I think I did actually. Oh, that we ordered so we ordered Taco Bell, and in the description of what we ordered, we, we wrote vegan so they wouldn't you know mess it up with like beans instead of meat or whatever, and. This dude brought his son with him on Postmates, which is, I see a lot, which is really cool. Because if I was a Postmate, I would yeah. fucking bring my kid. That'd or be so cool. guys that travel with their, with their, girlfriends, with their girlfriends and vice versa. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, he brought his son, and his son walks up to the gate and actually helps hand the food over. And he he says, he says I think it's really cool that you guys don't eat animals. And I was like, wow, that's like really, really cute and sweet. And then I was like... Thank you, kid. And the dad was like, "Yeah, he saw he saw the word vegan on the receipt, and he wanted to know what it meant." So I explained to him, and I was like, "Oh, that's that's like really cool." But that's like, such a nice way to explain it to your kid that yeah. we don't eat animals. We don't eat animals. And and like, I think it's cool. The kid, he was like six. I think it's really nice that you don't eat animals. Yeah, that Aww. was like a really sweet moment. Aww. If I did eat animals, I would eat you though. You'd be delicious. Oh my god! Whenever I order <laughs> from the Chipotle near us, I'm trying to figure out if it's the Postmate driver or oh, no, someone that works at Chipotle. The, it's the Chipotle person. They I'm love you. Pretty over there. sure it's someone that works at Chipotle. Every time I order f- from Chipotle, yeah. they'll write things on the lid that's like, "Girl, come do my nails." <laughs> they always reference like your latest video, and they're really sweet. It's kind of cool, but they write it on the box. I should go in there and just be like, who keeps doing this? <laughs> yeah, show yourself. <laughs> uh, that game's fun, though. That is a fun game. Thank you guys for suggesting that it game. It don't even get me started on Reed Drummond in our ice cream trough and a kid's name tat on tate tate and tater Don't even get me started on her with her just completely breaking down on camera and putting her husband on the spot about if he loves her or not and their marriage is good in a cooking show. Oh my God, Julian. Do you remember that? Yeah, she was like, she made herself like a daytime cocktail and then was sitting there being like... She's like, this reminds me of the first drink we ever had again. Do you remember that? Do you love me? Do you think I'm pretty? He's like, yes, babe, yes. Yeah, babe. He's like, yeah, Yeah. but like, tell me you love me. Tell me Tell me you love me. (laughs) We're just like, when's the part with the ice cream? (laughs) <laughs> Damn, Reed. Damn, Reed. You are you okay? Him on the spot like that. No. Are you okay, no. Reed? Reed's not okay. No, when the cameras are not rolling, she's not okay. She needs her husband to love her, man. <sighs> she does. 
She takes afternoon naps where she dreams. She, Mr. She just, Drummond, will you love Bree, please? <laughs> anyway, uh, this episode, um, basically, I know it was brought to you by Nature Box and Meandies, but it was basically brought to you by Reed Drummond. Oh, wow. it's almost Miss Weege's birthday. Yeah, guys, it's almost so her birthday. So excited. Um, She's going to be three years old. Thank you for watching this episode. Um, in all seriousness, <laughs> I would like to know your responses to what we ranted about, specifically the Katy Perry thing. I'm interested in that. I want to hear you guys' thoughts. And uh, like I said before, keep in mind, when you suggest things in the comments, we read them. And it could be your suggestion that we do the next podcast. Yeah. So thank you guys so much. Have a great week. And see you next time. Bye. Bye.